Uh, welcome uh, to the weekly educational rounds here at Seclair. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist at Seclair. And today I'm to joined by two of my colleagues and one of whom is our special guest for today. And on my right would be... Megan Piper, a physician assistant student from Seton Hill University. And on my left would be our special guest for today who would be... James Buckley, uh, part-time music director here at Seclair. And as everyone knows who has viewed our podcasts before, and if you want to listen to them, uh, Megan will be glad to tell you how to reach them at the end of this uh, broadcast. Uh, we tra- each week we try to prevent some type, we try to present some type of educational information out there that you can use in your life to enhance and pro- hopefully promote a life worth living for you and everyone around you. So James, uh, tell us a little bit about how you, how you became associated with Seclair. Well, uh, I uh, met Doc some years ago, uh, and he, he was looking for someone to help him with some uh, graphic design work and so forth, and he actually kind of invited me out here because he saw that I was involved with music too, which he, he was very interested in, and see, to, to see how, how uh, deeply I was into that. And, and one thing led to another, and we've had a pretty happy marriage since then, you know, doing uh, some different things and some great things with music. And as everyone out there, I'm sure, knows by now that Seclair is an integrative, holistic uh, psychiatric facility where we treat individuals and we do not treat diagnoses, where we try to look at the mind, body, and spirit and, and offer, where can we offer enhancements to an individual's life in order to have them be a more productive human being and experience the exquisite joy exactly, of being, as yes. like we like to say. So tell me how you tell me how uh, you became interested in music, James. Well, I, I, you know, I, it started as a young age, as, as, as most do, uh, when I sang uh, in, in the choir, and I was not the, uh, let's say, the, the, the most behaved child, but I did have this gift to sing. Uh, I wish my voice was like it was back then, uh, but it, that, that, that opened a lot of doors for me. And uh, it, it was at a time during the 60s where there was a lot of changes in music going on and a lot of new things and new ideas coming out. And I would always just like, I would hum melodies in my head and make up my own songs in my head, not thinking anything about it. I just Something just came out of me and I would make up my own songs as I went along. So that was uh, pretty interesting anyways as a music place I was uh, so so I would do that and then uh, I so I sang in the choir at school and at the church and everything like that and uh, and then uh, you know kind of broke away from music for a while until my older years and I started to get back into it and realized that hey I never lost lost the ability to write music so I would make up my songs again this time with a guitar and before you know it I connected with some guys and started a band and right off the bat I was writing music you know so I've written well over hundreds, hundreds of pieces in, in, in different uh, ways and different compositions that uh, ha- have been able to work. And, and I, uh, so, so I, I and again broke away from music for quite a, a couple decades and, and, and got back into it when uh, all of a sudden people were listening to my music and saying, oh, you should be playing today because the stuff you're doing, you did back then is really what's happening today. I said, I, I, di- I didn't know that because I had disconnected. So uh, they kind of talked me back into it, and I started doing benefits. And uh, the more I did benefits, to say, I'll, I'll come back and play for good as long as I can continue to do benefits and help others and give back. And that's how I ended up back at Seclair with the interview, and, and we did some great uh, great things with music here since I've been here. Yes, uh, yes, we have, and sometimes uh, you're, you can't arrive, but there's an alter ego of yours on, that, that, that shows up sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, before I ask Megan what she remembers about the 60s, um, <laughs> perhaps you can share with us what, uh, what type of meaning and benefit has music been in your life, James. I know that just like everyone, everyone's had some struggles in their life. Yes, and and the the part of the, uh, the at the, at the young age that what really got a hold of me was, was it was nothing that was uh, kind of uh, on on the bad side. It was all kind of positive, feel good kind of music, uh, happy melodies with with uh, uh, good uh, harmonies in the background. Those kinds of that's the music that attracted me back in those days and, and that's what I write today. I I have that that Beatle influence in me that's kind of a basis and a foundation for me today. And and so that that's that's helped me get through 
the rough times that I had, you know, uh, which I believe everybody goes through some difficult times in their life, and you know, you find a way to get through them, you know, and that that was that was my vehicle, that was my tool that I used to to get through that stuff. Well, here at Seclair, we don't put people into boxes and throw a particular theory or particular intervention at them, where we try to let people uh, orchestrate their own music and dance to the to the music in their own head and quite often uh dr chandre will suggest that we dance with people and mm -hmm. people dance with their lives and of course uh dancing with music is always a little bit more productive sure so we all we often try to make music music in our own heads and uh, i understand that probably in physicians assistant school they're not teaching uh, music as, as a particular type of therapy no. for uh, for anxiety or depression. Mm -hmm. So tell me uh, tell me what your thoughts are on music. You enjoy music, Megan. I do enjoy music. Um, I think it has a really strong impact on your mood. Um, it can kind of um, that's why like all these new websites and stuff have have um, playlists for if you're studying or if you're sad or if you're happy or if you're exercising. Like they have all these different things you can choose from because it really affects the way that you feel. Um, but no, they don't teach that conventionally in PA school. No, so tell me when you're when you're traveling in a car or you're with you're with friends and different types of music come on, can it can affect your mood? Can it affect your humor? Yeah, it can for sure. Like if you're on a road trip or something with your friends and you're going to do something fun and you'll have that song that comes up on the random playlist and it's kind of like it's it's like slow or soft or has like maybe the lyrics are sad and everyone's like oh wait we don't want this on you know we're we're in a different mood so you you know you switch it that happens and you switch it right and i'm sure that you've heard different uh, music referred to as mood music mm -hmm. mood music to, to set the mood right so quite often when individuals present here they come in perhaps with mood disorders and i'd like to have james address uh the type of what what he particularly does in order to reach those type of individuals? Uh, yes, there's there's a couple of different things that, that I can do. One of them is uh, to talk about what they you know are concerned with themselves, and 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 my my goal is to try to get them to talk about uh, mm -hmm. what 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 is going on inside them and what they're thinking, and then I see if I can find a way musically to connect that you know and say okay i just i have a perfect uh piece that i can play for you that might make you you know think about yourself a little and what, what's going on or i may ask them to actually write lyrics what what they're thinking on a piece of paper and i'll i'll put music to it right there and then off the top of my head just to say okay let's let's put this to music and see how it how it feels now so it depends on the individual but there's other ways too that I use to try to connect with them sometimes it's just playing something that that uh, connects with how they're feeling I, I want them to know that they're not necessarily alone when they think about these things that there are other people as well that are dealing with this and that music can be uh, a useful tool to help you express yourself where you can't speak. You know, sometimes if people are afraid to talk or can't really uh, express themselves. So musically, you can do that. You know, without mm -hmm. you know uh, getting into you know the, the difficulty of expressing vocally or verbally. There's an old uh, saying out there that music can soothe the savage beast. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what type of uh, symptoms can be improved with. What so symptomatic improvement can people expect with um, music? Some symptomatic improvement would be um, decreased muscle tension, kind of gives you that sense of relaxation. Um, depending on the song and kind of what you said with the lyrics, if they're relatable, people will think, oh, well, you know, somebody else feels like I do. And that, I think that's really important that um, people don't feel alone in, in what they're dealing with or, you know, in, in what they're going through. Um, decreases anxiety mm -hmm. um, agitation and then also like you said increases verbalization allows you to express yourself in a different way um, and then it can help with interpersonal relationships if somebody you know can I like that song too or yeah that mm -hmm. makes me feel the same way um, and also just like increased motivation and and it's a, a safe way to it, um, release your emotions. Well, I just just on that note, because you said soothe the savage beast, uh, be, uh, beast, I have to refer back to an experience where I was doing this at a, uh, uh, a hospital, 
And the, the difficulties they had in, this, in the institution was that it, during the shift change between the afternoon staff and the evening staff, the patients there, it was just total chaos. You know, it really disrupted them uh, severely. So Dr. Chaudhry said, you know, maybe we can go out there and keep them occupied during that change and, and see what happens. Well, what happened was the, it did calm them down. They were more relaxed. They were doing something that kept their minds off the staff change, which was very critical to them, you know, really threw them in a twirl. And we were able to get in a place where we could just not even think about that. It would happen, it would be over, and we'd be done. But we would get there using the musical bus to get there. And, and so many other things came out of that. So it did soothe the savage beast in a sense, you know. In Absolutely. That Absolutely. And quite often here at Seclair, we ask people to help us allow them to find their voice. Not necessarily their singing voice, right. but a, a voice. Everyone has a story, James, and, yes. and it deserves and it needs to be heard. You're exactly right. And sometimes that can be best approached, perhaps through an introduction, through a, through a song. Well, you know what? I, I use that same analogy uh, when I'll talk to people and I'll say, everybody has a story and your story is a movie. Think of it that way, that your story is an actual movie. And music is the score behind that movie. Okay, so sometimes you've had very disruptive times in your life. Well, there was probably some disruptive movie, m m music that was being, you know, was existing at that time. And, and you, maybe you attracted to that yourself to that. Uh, but and also, uh, in the same way, you know, we try to put that music to your life experience. You know, how did you feel at that time, you know? And sometimes I'll play a song and I'll, I'll ask, People, what do you think about that? You know, how does that affect you? What do you think about that song? So it is true that you're, everyone has a story. Absolutely, and it's it's so important that it be heard, mm -hmm. that be heard. Yes, by individuals. Uh, Megan, quite often when we deal with individuals in the with the autism within the spectrum disorders, uh, music is often shown to be a soothing effect on on individuals who perhaps uh, get overstimulated by all the sights, sounds, images, and thoughts of today's mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, a lot of times um, the environment can be heightened for individuals on the autism spectrum, um, but a lot of times with music, since it's so rhythmic and has um, kind of that uh, a specific pattern to it, they enjoy that type of that type of noise, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, every every other kind of auditory stimulation can be overwhelming, that can be soothing. And, and just to top that off, the, there's a trend going on right now with, with those on the autism spectrum that they're hooked up to their iPods or their iPhones and, and earbuds in constantly. I mean, you really have to say, you know, pull them out so you can speak to them because they're really comfort, comfortable in there, you know. So, you know, you're absolutely right. That is what's trending now with autism. And structure is so important in not only individuals on the spectrum lives, but in everyone's life. And uh, James, what I've found is that people often refer to music as structured. Mm -hmm. And they enjoy the structure of music, that it's just not an eclectic bunch of sounds. Right, exactly. It's not the, the chaos they may experience on a daily basis, because they never know what's going to come next, they never know what's going to happen, and never know what they're going to walk into that's going to throw them uh, for a loop. But with music, it kind of just keeps them on a pattern, you know, that they can feel comfortable with, without getting uh, too uh, uh, overstimulated. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit how music has personally affected you in your life. Well, I mean, it, it's it's affected me because I, it's a place I can go to to uh, release my creativeness, which uh, is really important to me because I feel I have this all bottled up in me, and I can, I feel I have a way of seeing people, uh, and and seeing how they feel, and then maybe I don't have the words to to soothe them, but I feel I have. The, the, the power to create something with music that might help them feel better and it's been I've, I've had so many people just tell me how that song made them feel and it may be mo most of the time it's something that I've written you know and so so I try to do that so that that's changed my life in that you know now I found a place that I can have a, a purpose and it feels like a purpose to me 
absolutely. And Megan, as you well know, during your time here, we ask people to allow us to assist them to help themselves. Mm -hmm. And off, quite often, what we do is assist them in finding their own voice and training them, helping them become their own therapist, mm -hmm. their own therapist. And I know that you've experienced many different people in different sessions like that. So tell, I'd like to get your thoughts on becoming your own therapist, and I'd like to have uh, James uh, talk about BF's, uh, music being self-therapy. Um, I think as far as becoming your own therapist, you come, you come here, you go to a place that can guide you um, and teach you how to deal with different situations that you're going to come across on a daily basis, and you take those skills that you learn and how to, how to uh, manage those situations and you apply them yourself, you know, so that I mean, you learn them here and then you can apply them in real life when it happens. Well, quite often what we'll use the analogy is, is having a flat tire. And I ask people whether they burn the car up or whether they hitchhike to the car dealership to buy a new, new car. I say, well, no, the tire's just flat. However, if you don't have the skills and the tools to learn how to change that tire, the tire's going to remain flat. So we're asking people to allow us to help them become their own therapist. And James, I'd like to talk to you about how, how music, singing, it can be your own be your own therapist. Oh yeah, one of the great analogies I, I try to use is when you're in a car and you're riding down the road and all this traffic is going on and you see people driving recklessly or whatever might be going on and if it's silent in there, you know you really, you know, kind of get caught up and you're watching all this stuff going on. And you're commenting on whatever may be happening. Look at that guy. Look at this. Watch out for this. And you know, but music can kind of like calm you down if you find the right type of music that, that you like to listen to to calm you down and you played at that time you're you're actually grounding yourself it admits amidst uh, all this chaos going on around you and and that can be done not not just there but any time of the day you know so if you're feeling overwhelmed like everything's just piling up on you you know you take a few minutes take a half hour 20 minutes whatever sit back and listen to some music close your eyes and you may just find yourself back on your feet again and say, okay, now I can take a deep breath. It's like taking a breath in life and, real, and just and just saying, reevaluate what's going on and make a better decision. Take a breath of life. I like that. Exactly. I'm going to steal that from you. Absolutely. I haven't had an original thought Keep in years. Keep taking those breaths. I will. <laughs> uh, and uh, James, uh, should anyone out there in the audience be interested and want to contact you, how could they do so? Uh, yes, they can contact me here at uh, Seclair. And uh, we can connect from there. So if you if you contact Seclair and ask for for myself uh, that you're interested in music therapy, uh, you know we can uh, make arrangements. Sometimes we do groups. Sometimes individual things work better. So you know uh, you have pretty much a lot some cho a lot of choices to to pick. You know so that's what they should do. And after the end of uh, today's live uh, Google Hangout. Uh, we'll be doing a recording, and James will be playing some songs with us, and we hope that you'll be able to tune in and, and get that recording, too. Uh, any uh, any final comments, Megan? Um, I just think music is important in everyone's life, and um, there's so many different kinds that really you can relate. Everyone can relate to some type of music. Absolutely, absolutely. Any any thoughts, uh, James, that you'd like to share? Well, you know, just keep listening, and, you know, if, if you feel lost, turn on uh, your favorite music and, and see what that does for you. There's a reason why you like it. You know, the re reason why you like a certain genre or uh, specific uh, kind of music, you should tune into that, because uh, for some reason there's something about it that connects with you. And should you take a chance and review some of the podcasts, some of the things that we offer here at Seclair. You may want to be interested in our integrative health conference that we're going to be having on May the 1st at Chestnut in Ridge Rin at, in Blairsville, Pennsylvania. Uh, and Megan? Um, to continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook, plus us on Google Plus, or follow us on Twitter under St. Clair Life. You can also find this and other Grand Rounds on youtube.com slash St. Clair video and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit www.stclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. And as always, a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and perhaps take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we... 
fish without bait. We fish without bait. And your assignment, as always, is to be good to yourself. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm going to perform one of my own original compositions here. It's called This is the Best Day of Our Lives. Something's going right You know what I mean Like making a good friend When you had to fight This friend of yours Was always there To stand by your side Whatever it took You could count on them Whoa This is the life That we've lived As time went on you found the first love of your life It was a special time you never forget your very first date And when she smiled and kissed you it felt like you could reach right up and touch the sky This time stood still for a moment so great Whoa, this is the life that we've lived Whoa, on that day you might have said This is the best day 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 of our lives As the years went by you got a job And made a family of your own you knew what you wanted, or so it seemed You worked so hard, you sweat You gave up everything to build a place called home How good did it feel? How proud could you be? Whoa, this is the life that we've lived Best day. Oh, this is the best day. Yeah, this is the best day. This is the best day. This is the best day. This is the best day of our lives. There was a time so very long ago We don't remember that day When we came into this life And all alone there was a woman Holding a child in her arms And looking right into our eyes She said, whoa life to be lived Whoa, and on that day she might have said this is the best day 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 Best day of my life. Best day of my life. This is the best day of my life. The best day of our.
our lives Thank you.